Now, from traveling and staying in Airbnbs all around the world, I am a self-proclaimed expert in Airbnbs, both as a traveler and a host. There's a glaringly huge yet hidden problem in short-term rentals, specifically Airbnb, that isn't being addressed yet. Here's my most recent experience where I paid nearly $700 a night at this freshly remodeled home at the coast. Now, as we were packing up and getting ready to head to the coast with some friends in town, I booked us a newer listing on Airbnb that I thought was going to be a great place. From the listing description and the photos, it showed a freshly renovated home that looked clean, inviting, and warranted the $700 a night price tag. This is what we actually got. I literally thought I had driven to the wrong address, but it was the right place and it was clear it was another hurried half-ass remodel project just to start producing cash. Now this form of catfishing is becoming more and more popular on Airbnb and it's coming from what I call don't entrepreneurs, who are entering the Airbnb space in droves attracted to high ROIs and fast cash. However, this is an unsustainable and short-sighted business model that is plaguing the short-term rental market, especially on Airbnb. And guess what? You and I are about to see a lot more of it. So how do we as travelers avoid these places and how do we aspiring hosts avoid failing in our own Airbnb endeavors? So if you haven't heard yet, this is Airbnb. Well. Not him, he's the founder or co-founder and CEO, but more average people like this who decide to put their spaces up for rent, they're called hosts. And the average Airbnb host makes about $924 a month. Remember that number. But for many others, depending on frequency, quality, and location, hosts can take home thousands to tens of thousands of dollars a month off of a single listing. But if hosts can make several thousands of dollars, why do most hosts fail in the long run? The answer is simple. They care more about profits than their customers. Take a look at the revenue life cycle of most Airbnb hosts. First, they get bookings that leave poor to decent reviews and their star rating begins to drop. Anything below 4.7 is failing. And because of the failing rating, the host and their listing gets fewer matches and hits from five-star guests who want or are seeking a better experience. So occupancy rate begins to tumble. Now naturally, it's better to have someone in the rental than have it set empty, so the host begins to lower their rates. Lower rates and poor reviews brings in less than ideal guests. And these guests are a lot rougher on the place. And then the whole cycle continues and repeats and repeats to the point they're in a constant battle of lowering price to increase occupancy rate and trying to work with low quality guests. All the while their system is broken. But that still has not stopped flocks of people eager to cash in on the supposedly easy cash flows of short term rentals. Now let's be honest, we all love and like the concept of being a business owner or entrepreneur, big buzzword these days, and all we need to do is push that button and we flood our bank accounts with cash. It's actually so enticing that there have been an era of budding gurus teaching the internet ways of making tons of money with little to no work. Here's a short list of everything that you may see. Amazon dropshipping, Shopify, eBay flipping, affiliate marketing, day trading, cryptocurrency, Etsy, Instagram influencer. Speaking of which, you can come and follow me on Instagram at Kai J Andrew. And soon to be added onto that list is Airbnb host. And here's why. When there's an emerging market, especially a disruptor that allows people to make money easily, people will always pour in. And when masses of people come into any market, we undoubtedly get a substantial number of people that are low quality players and copycats. Kind of like if you're looking up dehumidifiers on Amazon and you see a bunch of random Chinese brand names with very similar designs and styles, but sketchy quality and longevity, same thing here. The thing is, is that people will always follow the money, whether it's good or bad. But when it happens in huge waves like we are seeing now, you create what I call the four horsemen of business that destroys beginners and business owners resistant to change. Competition, crowded marketplace, regulations, and depressed pricing. Depressed pricing, not depressed pricing. It's not like sad prices. Now this is a picture of one of my very first listings on Airbnb way back in like 2010, 2011. Local premium hotels were charging 350 plus a night. I charged $500 a night because you got a whole condo, two bedrooms, two bath, and perhaps the best location inside the city. Today, if you go on to Airbnb, the same condo or the same type of condo in the same area is about 80 to $100. I'm sure you've noticed this in your major city too. Remember competition amongst businesses is always good for the consumer. Bad for business and new entrants though. So is that the reason why most Airbnbs fail? Well, it's just the first part. 
The key reason of failing in low quality Airbnbs is the rise of what I call the entrepreneurs. These are folks who choose to enter into the space of business and are forced to become entrepreneurs. However, they either don't know how to be an entrepreneur, they don't care to be one, or they don't want to be one. That's why I call them entrepreneurs. And these entrepreneurs are primarily responsible for the tens of thousands of listings on the platform that you've probably stayed at where you felt like you were duped into booking a place that looked way better online. Am I right? I got tricked a couple times too. Most of the time in these listings, cleaning looks a bit suspect, the furniture is very well worn or recycled, and you don't quite trust the towels and linens. These types of properties generally sit at a 4.6 rating or lower on the platform. That's really bad. And there are four quick tips I always follow to make sure I have the highest odds of getting a good Airbnb. First is I only book 4.9 or I try to 4.9 stars and higher because you're often trained to think that 4.7 or 4.8 is good, not on Airbnb. You wanna live in the 4.9 to five stars, that's where the high quality bookings are. Second is you wanna look for telltale signs in the photos. Pay attention to the details of how pillows are fluffed, towels are folded, and books or board games are put away. If they're messy or not well organized in the photo, the likelihood of you arriving and having them nice, neat, and clean and tidy after 100 other people is slim to none. Number three is never trust the photos. Professional photographers are wizards these days with editing programs. Here's a photo from a professional of the listing that I booked, and here's what it actually looked like when I got there. And the last little tip here is browse through as many reviews as possible and definitely check out their listing breakdown rating. This shows how other guests have been rating all the different parts of like cleaning, communication, ease of access, or check-in process, and it gives you a good idea of how well managed the listing is. Again, anything under a 4.7 should start raising red flags for you. Starting an Airbnb business is no different than starting any other type of business. And in some ways, the bar is set even higher because of the instant feedback you get from the reviews and from your guests. On Airbnb, it can be as high as 90 to 100% rate or review rate amongst the best listings which is unheard of in almost any industry. Alas, the barriers to entry is still low since anyone with a physical structure can list something on the Airbnb platform. And that ease of entry into the market has allowed a flood of people seeking easy cash. But these people are not creating listings to improve the traveler experience or give a great stay or place to stay for travelers to enjoy. Most of the time it's focused on making as much profit as possible with as little money out of pocket as possible. And the ironic thing is, is that ends up destroying their listing and business. Whether it's arbitrage, buy and rent, lease and hack, house hacking, or land hacking, essentially, if you can get a lease or mortgage, you can start an Airbnb. And that's allowing too many fresh people or entrepreneurs into the market. And that's the crux of the issue, is that the low barriers of entry has caused a disconnect between the entrepreneurs and the guests. Now, these are the core issues that tend to be ignored with entrepreneurs who open up Airbnb listings. Please don't fall in this trap. Focusing on the guests and their experience, under promise, over deliver, cleanliness, attention to detail, understanding the numbers, and building systems and communicating. All of these are musts in general business, yet critical to sustain a short-term rental business, and they're often glanced over or completely ignored. Now, I've narrowed down four buckets where most hosts fall into. First one is shut down. Basically, they get closed down or limited because they were illegally renting out of space or they had to get permits due to regulations. Second is they get stuck. They over leveraged and bought a property expecting way higher nightly rates, but they're now stuck. The third bucket is stressed. These are owners who realize the amount of management in short-term rentals is significantly more than they expected. And then fourth is sold. They either sold or converted their short-term rentals into long-term rentals, main homes, because the profits were no longer there or worth it for them to continue. And then of course is a fifth smaller bucket where very few people go, it's the thriving. People who have adapted to the market and became true entrepreneurs and focus on the guest experience. It may seem kind of crazy to consider entering a marketplace that is highly competitive, even saturated in some areas. So is it still worth it using Airbnb as an income source? Yes. Absolutely. The market is primed for principled entrepreneurs who are willing to run an actual business and not see it just as a cash grab. Now here's the rub though. You can't go into it half-assed. It's actually to our advantage that there are so many entrepreneurs in the industry. Four things you need to succeed in the Airbnb market in the foreseeable future. One, 
Embrace becoming an entrepreneur and don't take it lightly. Focus on the long-term cash flows and growth, not just the immediate nightly rate. Second is focus on the guests and their experience. Under promise and over deliver. Third, run a legitimate business. Get the correct zoning permits and run your numbers before investing in a market. Fourth is to prepare to do some real work up front. Easy money exists only after you poured in the hours and dollars of hard work. There's no legal or sustainable business that can provide you five, 10, $20,000 a month consistently without actually working, sorry. If you are ready to get into short-term rentals and take a stab at hosting on Airbnb, use my link down below, check out my website to see how you can work with me, download my free guides at kaiandrew.com, watch this video right here to see where you should start looking. Love you all, Kai out.